uh, I was very emotional. I felt like crying. Uh, it was horrendous, a horrendous situation, which um, it's just the sustained period of it. You know, things happen and they're scary, but usually they're over. This happened and it kept happening and it kept happening and it kept happening. Hey, morning. As you can see, the, the weather is back this morning. Just got me uh, breakfast on. Got some bacon, eggs, and uh, I'm gonna have a bit of a bit of syrup on my bacon this morning. Which is new for me, but give it a go. So, plan for today. Uh, we kind of came into a, a river system day before yesterday or a kind of lake system had to carry our boats over I'll try and record that going back so we've got some footage of us actually going back over and see what we did but um, we are going to head back out in that direction I'll probably take our boats back out uh, into the main lake that we started on this morning and then um, head up uh, that way because we've uh, we've only got tonight and then we're heading off tomorrow so uh, which is sad we got a little tip off about a good day now, so I think we're going to try and head for that and see see what that's like. And that will leave us a couple of hours probably away from the canoe centre tomorrow when we get back. So uh, we've got to be out of here by like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so that gives loads of time in the morning to kind of mill about and do what we need to do. But I'm going to get my food cooked because I'm starving. Egg. Bacon. And then, oh, syrup, baby. Look at that. I don't think I've ever eaten this before, but I've seen other people eat it, and it looks divine. I've got a slight hangover this morning as well, so I'm going to treat myself. Oh, get in my belly. All right, then. Oh, my God. I don't know how to eat this. I just realised I've got a leaf in there. It. I'm gonna try and oh my good lord mmm oh my word that's tremendous it's everywhere <laughs> oh that's syrup man that is so good it's fully naughty, isn't it? Syrup on bacon. That's a heart attack all over, isn't it? Crazy. Right, that is this camp all done. All packed away. Just my little dry spot left. It was a good one, actually. A great view. Look at that. Amazing. Enjoy this one, Robbie. Yeah, yeah man. We're ready to go. Last few bits to pack away. See where the boys camped last night. Little flat spots. And then the day now up in the background. It's a good one. It's been well used, that one. You can tell. Got a lot of graffiti in there. I have to add my little tag in a moment. We're going to head off in that direction, out across the lake and then around the corner and uh, head back to where we brought the boats across in preparation for our last bit tomorrow. Now my camp done. Bye bye Mr Dano. Bye bye. Looks like we're going to be paddling into the wind a little bit today. Certainly. This first bit, not too bad. Doesn't look quite as choppy as it was yesterday, but we'll have to see. Amazing, 
absolutely love this. Absolutely love it. Do it all day. Every day. <laughs> it's been so cool. Even the boats. We were originally going to go with Canadian canoes and, and then we looked at these and kind of chopped and changed and uh, decided to go for these as a chain. Um, I think I've got experience with them. Never a, a tourer, you know, long sort of style of boat, but storage was a bit tight initially, getting everything in here. Food really was the main issue, but uh, now most of the food supplies are getting much lower. It's, uh, it's fine pack space, good. I think we've got kind of systems down, kind of organizing every morning. The pain with these is every day you have to take everything out and pack everything back in and they're in individual dry bags or smaller dry bags, whereas with a Canadian canoe, obviously you've got one main bag and it does make life much easier. But the downside of it is, they're much slower Canadian canoes. We've got around much, much bigger areas in these than what we would do. Or we've had much shorter paddling days, which is nice, because it can be hard work at times. But yeah, in these things we've been zipping around, getting to see everything we want to kind of in the morning, early afternoon. And then it gives us more time in camp. It's, it's just gone 11 now, so we'll, hopefully be at a camp by early afternoon and then that'll give us the afternoon to do some fishing and stuff which is which is nice so you get a nice mix of it really so rob's turn to do food tonight my stew went down well last night everybody seemed to enjoy it so uh i get the night off this evening i might do a bit of carving so this is the point in the video where everything starts to go wrong um, hi everyone, yeah, we, we made some really poor decisions over the next couple of hours and um, if I'm honest they put us all at pretty significant risk. Um, yeah, so right, I'll take you back a little bit now just to give you a bit of an idea of how we got to this point and you know what happened, but uh, just quickly. So uh, on the second morning, um, we had started at an island, uh, the second morning of this whole trip, we started on a, an island at the other end of the lake, then in the morning paddled down the other side of the main body of the lake, um, and we crossed diagonally to this point where we are in the video now. Um, we had made the decision to come down and cross over and, 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 and portage into another uh, set of lakes because we had seen in the weather forecast that it was going to be windy and wet um, and we saw that that other set of lakes that we've just the, the past two or three videos have been set in were smaller, narrower lake systems um, so they offered us some protection from that wind uh, and rain. The plan was to do that in reverse on the way back cross back over at this point, head up the other side of the lake, which was uh, protected from the wind and, uh, uh, that was coming across. Um, I think we'd all be, we, we were all very surprised when we got to this point and actually saw ha just how windy it was. We had been protected, our, our plan had worked, and you know, we'd been in this, this other lake system and not realized just how windy it actually was. Um, we got to this point, the wind was coming diagonally across the lake. At this point in the lake, uh, it's around probably a total of 600 meters. Um, our plan was to cross over to where there's an island. That was about 450 meters away. Um, when we got here, just because of the sheer amount of uh, uh, waves coming across, uh, I still wanted to go ahead with the plan and cross and head up the other side. We'd, the, first, the initial part would be tough, um, but it was the narrowest part of the lake. Um, and then we would have been sheltered from the wind uh, as we traveled up the other side towards where we were gonna stay. Uh, Rob, on the other hand, was struggling. He had, he's, got, he's struggling with his back. Um, the way he'd been sat in the, the, the kayak all week, he had been struggling and, and didn't want to do that, that, that crossing. Uh, so uh, there was some discussion about it, uh, but we made the decision that what we were gonna do is um, we were gonna head up this side of the lake um, to uh, an area 
uh, similar distance, um, opposite the island where we had stayed on the, the first night. Um, we knew that there was a Dano hut there, we were going to stay there for a period of time or possibly until the morning uh, and then cross over the lake so we were on the correct side of the lake to get back to the canoe centre in the morning. Now to give you some idea, the lake is around 90 metres deep on average, uh, possibly more in some places. Uh, obviously that's an average. Uh, it never gets above a couple of degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, so it's, it's freezing, it's hypothermic if you go in for, a, for any sort of a few minutes. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, up to a kilometre kind of wide. Um, as I say, we made the decision we were going to head up this side, um, which meant that we were being uh, uh, battered by the wind. It was coming into our kind of faces. Uh, if I'm facing you, it was kind of coming from this direction. Um, and on our right hand side, we had the shore. So it's the, uh, uh, the, the, the waves were coming across, they were hitting us, some were hitting the shore and then they were coming back at us. So for, if we weren't paddling, we were going backwards because the wind in our face. Um, and we also had to contend with uh, waves that were coming back off the shore, which meant we weren't just dealing with waves from one direction. Um, for the next two and a half, I think, three, uh, hours, three hours, um, we battled up this side of the lake. I think it was that long, it was somewhere in that region. Um, we made, uh, there was nowhere really to stop, but it was you know, very rocky, it was very difficult to stop anywhere on our, our side of the island. So we battled our way up this side of the lake. Um, once we got to the area where we knew this Dano hut was, um, we had to round a corner to go into a, another arm of the lake that went off on the right hand side. Um, when we got to that turning, it was the widest point of the lake, so it's best part of a kilometre wide, the lake at this point. Uh, it, the wind is coming directly across that kilometre uh, and obviously the waves are building. Uh, they're hitting the, the, the rock face uh, on our right hand side and they're coming back. So these waves are, you know, a foot to two foot tall. Um, they're, you know, you're dealing with them coming towards you, um, but then they're hitting the rock face behind you and they're coming back at you. So you've now got really turbulent water waves coming from what feels like every direction. Uh, uh, waves coming from your front or your back, you can deal with to an extent, um, but coming broadside to you make it very difficult. The, the canoe's 20 feet long, and I think it's 19 feet long, kayak I should say. Uh, if you're going into them, you've got the stability of that length. If they're coming from the side, you're you know, as wide as you are basically, you know, no more than a foot and a half or so. Uh, so you're incredibly unstable. We battled through that section and got into this arm of the lake and then realized the Dano hut was being used anyway, so we weren't able to use it. Now, in hindsight, at this point, we should have stopped. We should have said, enough's enough. We're not gonna get across here. Um, we'll stop, you know, we'll find somewhere we'll just wild camp. I don't know why, and at this point, I made a huge mistake uh, along with Rob. We decided, we looked at the lake, we looked at where we had to cross. Although it was probably up to a kilometer wide, uh, if you headed directly into the wind, we felt that what we could do is, is head not quite directly into the wind um, and cross about two thirds of the lake. So somewhere in the region of 700, maybe 800 meters, not, yeah, probably 700 meters, we, there was an island and we could reach the top point of that. Um, and it then meant that we could come down either this side of it or head round the back of that island. Um, and because we were so far across the, the lake, we felt it would probably be uh, calmer. Terry didn't want to do this. He'd gotten out of the boat. Uh, you know, in, in hindsight, he'd said that he'd been up and seen a better viewpoint and, and didn't want to do this. He's the weakest swimmer of the three of us. Um, and, and as I say, this is two degrees, you know, it's probably possibly colder at this time of year. Um, it, and if you're in there for a few minutes, that's all it takes, um, you know, hypothermia will set in. Um, even so, we, talk, we, we talked about it, in, in honesty we probably talked him into it, well, we definitely talked him into it, uh, and we head off across uh, the, 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 the lake kind of into the, into the wind. Um, within a f probably a couple of hundred metres I realised, you know, this was a bad decision. We were 
already battling, you know, big waves, many of them, well, one a second almost, you know, they're, they're, they're coming over the front of the boat. Uh, I can't stay on the trajectory that we had planned to hit the top of the island, and I'm now heading across the deepest, widest point of the, the lake, battling these waves. Um, but it was, I should have turned around. I probably should have turned, without doubt, should have turned around, but I didn't. Um, I felt that if I stayed on this course, I could make it to where I, I, I needed to get. Uh, really bad decision. Once we hit about probably three or 400 meters, um, the waves seem to turn. They, they, instead of coming across a, a, a diagonal angle across the lake, they seem to be coming down the lake much more. So now I'm having to take more of a course to counter that, um, to stop them breaking across my boat. Um, Rob is managing to stay on a different trajectory, so he's heading kind of, you know, more towards the island. But even he said it came to a point where he was, wasn't able to do this. Terry's with me. Um, I'm extremely nervous at this point. I'm focused. They said, you, you're here in the video, um, they, they're, they're saying I was just focused on what I was doing. Every wave, I was watching it. You miss one of them and it turns you broadside, you're then hit by a wave by the side and that's what takes you over. So I was very aware of that and I was trying to focus on what I needed to do. Um, but there became a point where Rob had made the decision that he wasn't able to stay on the course that he was on. It was now starting to hit the side of his boat and his only decision that, that he made in his mind was he was gonna turn and he was gonna now try and ride the waves rather than battling across them. The problem with this is at this point, you're, you're heading towards the waves, the waves are coming in at you from, from kind of this angle towards you. Um, so you're kind of going through them. You've got the length of the boat to offer you the stability. And once you turn into the wave, instead of coming from this point, they're now coming in at 90 degrees and these waves are coming in and they're hitting the side of your boat. Now you've got best part of 20 feet of boat, it's not cutting through it, and you're, you're potentially bobbing up onto the top of the wave and then falling into the well, and then another wave and falling into the well, which is very taxing. You're using your paddle to try and keep you upright. Rob shouted, I'm turning. I couldn't see him because of my position, um, so I'm having to try and look over my shoulder where I'm already trying to deal with these waves. Um, I tried to do it. I, I, I what I should have done is stuck to my plan. I didn't, I can't, I did, I've got to be honest, I freaked out a little bit. I tried to turn, I thought I'm getting separated, I need to try and turn with them. Um, I should have stuck with what I was doing, but I didn't. I ended up on top of the waves, you know, bobbing, they're coming at me, uh, you know, parallel, and hitting the side of the boat. They're all coming over, they're all coming over my boat. I'm trying to counter it and keep myself upright. Um, and I gave up, I couldn't do it. I said, no, I can't do it, I can't do it. And I, try, I turned back into the waves, and I carried on for a little bit. Um, I then at one point got a chance to look back over my shoulder and realize that those two had turned. They'd gone, they were heading in that direction uh, and they were calling for me to do the same. So I did, I tried again, I turned. And on this occasion after a real battle, it's really hard, you've got waves hitting the side of your boat and every time you try and turn into it, a wave hits and it turns you back parallel. It just wants to turn you. I did manage to turn it and at this point realized that was, in my mind, an even worse decision, because now I'm riding waves in a 20 foot long um, uh, 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 touring kayak, which any one of those, if the nose digs in, which they do on a kayak, it, it just digs in and turns you and your kayak, you're over, there's nothing stopping it. So I'm trying to counter steer with my paddle in the water on either side, trying to stop it. The waves are coming at me and I'm, they're, they're pushing me along. So I'm going at hell of a speed, um, but they're, they're, they're kind of countering me. Um, and yeah, the video will, will show the rest. At this point, um, I, I managed to get to my camera and you know switch it on. It, it hadn't even crossed my mind up until this point. And uh, yeah, you'll see the fallout, if you like. Uh, I was extremely emotional, um, which is rare for me. People who know me, I'm pretty deadpan. Well, I don't know, I think I am, but uh, I was very emotional. I felt like crying. Uh, it was horrendous, a horrendous situation, which um, it's just the sustained period of it. You know, things happen and they're scary, but usually they're over. This happened 
and it kept happening and it kept happening and it kept happening for, you know, I don't know how long this went on for. It was a good half an hour, probably 40 minutes, so or possibly more than that. So it's incredibly demanding on you. It really, really freaked me out. Um, anyway, so you'll see the video. We we get to an island. We all took five minutes to do our own thing. Uh, I then started a fire for, for, for you know, a bit of morale uh, and... We, we had a chat off camera, I'll say that. There was a few stern words. Terry was upset with me and Rob because we had kind of, you know, talked him into to, to making the crossing that he was unhappy with. I was unhappy with Rob because I felt that he had changed from the plan and it created panic. Uh, and um, I think Rob also felt that maybe we could have stayed on a, on a better path and stuck with the original plan. So we had all had these discussions uh, and then I kind of sneakily got a camera out and recorded uh, the, the, the rest. So, uh, thanks very much for watching. I'm sorry if that sort of 10 minutes or whatever, um, I just felt this was the only way I could get it across. I didn't have it all on video. Uh, I've got parts of it which I'll, I'll show and show, hopefully you would have seen those. But, uh, yeah, sorry to Rob's mum and dad and sorry to... To TD's family for you know uh, my part in this. Uh, it was a very scary situation, and many lessons have been learned that we will not be making again. Thanks for watching, everyone. That was probably the most scary thing I've ever done in my life. I'm literally shaking. Absolutely shaking. Just tried to cross the channel back there and um, yeah, it got horrendous. Got horrendous. Really, really scary. Just got drift now. I'm literally petrified. I feel like crying now. CD, you okay? Turbo, yeah. you alright mate? Really no, nor am I. I know, I know. That was horrendous. I tried to stay with you, but then he told he told us to turn and it fucking just that was that was horrendous. No, I know, I know, I know mate. I tried to we have literally we couldn't have missed more land if we tried I literally, i'm literally shaking I'm, you know, I'm so scared okay. just, well, did, i did try but it just got hard didn't it you know i tried to stay close to you coming across it fucking just sent us into meltdown didn't it that was the worst thing. I'm just gonna drift. Where are we heading? Uh, just drift to that fucking island in front of us. That's my plan. I ain't, I ain't doing too much now. Just. Yeah. And my legs are shaking, literally. That was a shitty experience and we all actually had a a bit of a moment to ourselves, didn't we? Yeah. Scariest experience in a boat? Yeah. It's your scariest experience in a boat? Yeah. Yeah. Easy. I've spent plenty of time in the ocean surfing and doing all sorts of nonsense and had near drowning experiences, but that properly shit me up. We'd been in the water for 
for many hours tackling some fierce crap. I think that, I think that was it. It was a culmination of we'd already we'd already pushed ourselves, hadn't we? Up and up until that point, we had significantly pushed ourselves uh, to get there. And then second, you know, a few minutes before, we had been through something pretty tough. That those there was just that turbulent water in that area wasn't it by those rocks where it was incredibly hard and then we had been choppy for quite a significant period of the day anyway oh yeah it had been hard because we've been coming up the kind of windward side hadn't we no let up at all all day there wasn't even a, a little beach we could pull into for a quick breather even if we stayed in our boats it was just constant carnage in any way feel that that was going to be you know hard, a hard crossing I'd kind of decided that uh, it was possible, you know, completely possible, and um, and I was shocked, if I'm honest. I was, I was, I was quite shocked. Yeah, it, it caught me off guard. You know, coming across there, it was getting. You know, we were, we realized. I realized. I was like, right, we're not going to hit the end of that island. And we can't get to that island, you know, with our initial plan. Like we say, in hindsight, potentially turning into the wind and coming down might have worked. But that turning situation for me was by far the, the kind enough. of scariest point. From that line, it changed and it went almost tidal. Yeah. And it just went really dark blue, almost black, cresting right. waves and just more wind and just pure carnage. It was carnage. And one of the scariest moments of my life. I'm able to do this, half the paddling, no stress, it's going fine, and the current was fine at this point. Mm. But as we got past that point There was the a island, sudden point, wasn't there? Was, there? It's where the lake opened up yeah. further down yeah. that way, and then it got a lot more powerful. Oh, it got crazy. And, and Some of the waves changed. were so, so instead big. Of it going down that way mm. kind of adjacent to the yeah because it was originally going that way yeah it did it, like you say then it, it turned did. this way and i don't know whether that was the wind changed or what lake. what was yeah probably it was it, doing that the wind was doing that yeah basically. and we hit that point and in that point the waves were crazy it was they were breaking like it, they were like breaking on my boat and yeah, i was like yeah. that you know coming up that side it was yeah it was they, they, you know we were getting breakers coming over, but they were just hitting the front of the boat and kind of breaking over the front, coming on the splash deck. And I was like, that's fine. I can handle that. But, but they, were, they were hitting the side, like, like slapping the side of the boat. And I could feel douche, douche, you know, pulling them around. But when that, and I when think, it got I think worse, we, genuinely, yeah. I felt my, we'd, we'd all had a couple of little moments where we went, oh, you know, that's a bit wobbly, a bit more Yeah, I tried to Terry a few times. I was like, big, big waves, big waves, you know, but be aware then, of them. Prior to the me turning, it was I was properly nearly going over. It was yeah, it was really dodgy. And I made a call because I thought this is what we need to do. We need to turn. It, it probably makes sense, but in that moment, it was kind of like I tried to do it. I heard somebody say turn into it. It wasn't and I, easy, no. <laughs> and I tried to do it, and it just would not turn. It was dangerous. And for so do. long, I was like going over the over the top of the waves, mm. and I was parallel to them. And it, like the boat was trying to go, I was having to kind of hit the water to keep it flat. And then I managed to turn it. And then even when I did manage to turn it, I think the waves were so powerful at that point. You were, you were riding them, weren't you? But it was so hard to keep them. It's not being in control and mm. being so vulnerable in the middle of nowhere. It's such an expanse of water, should I say. Yeah. And not being a strong swimmer is a really scary place to be. Yeah. It's completely, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, to mother nature there. Yeah, no control over it. So vulnerable, oh. anything. Even your own boat. That's we didn't tough. even have any control over our own boat. Yeah, I, I, I heard one point Terry saying, for fuck's sake, and like shouting, because he was like, he was obviously panicked and concerned. And I think that was the thing for me. And that moment when I tried to turn and couldn't turn, and then looked, I, I had to look over my shoulder to try and work out where you were, and I could see you had turned. I was like, fuck, I've got to turn. I have to turn. Because there's, you know, otherwise I'm ending up. Well, I guess I could have just gone elsewhere. But it's um, gone to the far bank, I guess. But it was, a, it was it's still a very long way. But I was thinking, I've got to stay away from TD because I don't want to be anywhere near his boat. The last thing I want to be doing is, you know, us touching 
and that's just a whole level of shit, isn't it? That's a bear, bear in mind that um, I was the one that was scared to take on that, that, that mm. you know, that journey. And then I look across to you, and you're the one, your face. I asked you two or three times, "Are you all right?" Because your face was not looking all right. I would, yeah, I was. And just, I was panicking, looking at you, and you're supposed to oh, look really? at the fat control. Yeah, I, I like, was what? just. I think I said fat to you at control. one point. I said, "I'm just con concentrating. I'm just concentrating." Yeah. You know, it's fine, you know, keep going, keep going. I was watching Terry watching you, and Terry was more poised on you than he was looking I in, was. Front, in front of his face. Oh, really? Yeah, but if you had a panic off, I was going to panic off. Yeah. I was just trying to stay health and safety, guys. We need to brush up on a health and safety scenario. Definitely. I'm going to go on a health and safety course after this. We all need to go on one, yeah. <laughs> Forget a canoeing course, just health and safety. Yeah. How to lift a box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what manual hand. Manual hand. <laughs> <laughs> Now all of that's done, I'll show you my uh, my camp. As you can tell, we're all a bit jittery. It's been uh, quite an experience today, but it's made good by this out here. Here's my camp, by the way. Done a little diamond configuration on the tarp, hammock and everything. You've all seen that before. As, um, just in case you haven't, Silver 450, under blanket. This is a war bonnet blackbird hammock. DD 2.9 by 3 super light tarp. Look at this out here. This is my view for the evening. Morning all. So last morning today and we've woken up to perfectly blue skies and flat calm water which uh, <laughs> would have been lovely to paddle in but it's still a treat this morning. So uh, we don't fly until later today so we have actually got most of the day so we can still enjoy the day and make the most of it. We've got um, yeah we're gonna have we're gonna have a big feast this morning I think with remaining food whatever's left over thrown in a pan um, I've got some American pancakes so I'm gonna do those probably have a little swim enjoy the Sun for a bit and then um, we've got about an hour's paddle back to the canoe center where um, pick the car back up and then two and a half three hour journey back to Gothenburg Airport um, our flights not until it's gone nine o'clock tonight so uh, yeah, no rush this morning. Pancake time. Have a look at them bad boys. Okay. Get me some syrup on them. This is well bad. I never usually eat anything like this. But it feels right. Oh.
Right then. Ding, dang, dong. Into them. Let's see what these suckers are like. Mmm. Oh, it's good. Very, very sweet. Very sweet. Not something I'd normally eat, but very good. Bye bye, dear friend. Right, back to the canoe centre. What a beautiful what, five, four, five days. Incredible. I shall be back. I'll be back. Love it. Sad to see the end of the camp. That's for sure. Definitely some highs and lows. But all made for an awesome, awesome trip. So good. Do a little ending. Here we are. It's over. I know. Sad times. It's over, big man. I've already burnt my passport. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Tinder for the for the night. Yeah. For tonight's fire, hey? Mm, indeed. It's been emotional. It's been incredible. It actually it has. has been emotional. Thank you, sweetie. It has been emotional. Mm. No, thank you. Yeah. I couldn't have done it with two better people. I honestly couldn't. I would yeah, have I had some so. challenges along the way. It'd be fair to say. Well. Yeah. Nothing we can't ever come. No, no, it makes you stronger, doesn't it? Eh? Outdoorsy did. Kev plus men. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll put that. That'll be the title. <laughs> Canoe camping. Three men in a boat. Bushcraft. Three men. <laughs> three men. Two, three don't boats. Say, don't say anything about a cup. <laughs> don't say anything about a cup. <laughs> no cups here, yeah. So, uh, no, it's just the video, really. No, no, it's all good. It's all, it's all good content. It's fine. Right. So, thank you, chaps. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for all the Wind, everything, rain, everything. Yeah, no Dad problem at Brown. all. Dad Brown. I do it. It's all in selfishness, really, just so I can come and do these things. Ah, oh, well, you know, it's a selfless good deed, really, isn't it? Beautiful. Anyway, right. Thank you, everyone. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, love yourself and your friends and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Be kind See, to yourself. Be kind to yourself. <laughs> No, in all in all seriousness, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope I've been able to put it together and capture um, what it's been. It's been absolutely amazing. Really, really quite amazing. Um, we've had wind, rain, hail. We had a thunderstorm. It was, somehow we've managed to stay out of the, the worst of the rain, but... Um, it's been so good. It's been so good. I've really enjoyed it. I'll be back very soon, Sweden. I'm coming back for you next year again. We're talking about Canada as well. Had a little chin, chit wag, chin wag. There's a, a possibility of a little Canadian trip in there next year. So uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone. Signing out. Not too shabby for Mr. Brown, eh?
Yeah, that is it. Oh, there's the other camera.